Today, I want to talk about the wonderful world of Walt Disney. For those of us who are in our 50s, we remember a time when six o'clock on Sunday evening, it didn't matter what you were doing, it didn't matter where you were, you would run home to watch the wonderful world of Walt Disney. This was a time when Michael Jackson was the king of pop. Everyone had the Thriller album. You had the Thriller album. Your mama had the Thriller album. Even your grandparents had the Thriller album. America was, in many regards, much smaller. Because I was just sitting there thinking, you know, there was the Lawrence Welk show, Yeehaw, American, let's see, I think uh, Top American Gold Dancers. There were shows that everyone knew because everyone watched these shows. And back then, humans were more interesting. You would have an ant who was who had a garden and she grew roses or petunias or something like that. Or you had an uncle who collected um, bottle caps or something like that. You know, people had deeper interest. And I'm going somewhere with this because uh, I need Sam Vakin. He talks about this, how people aren't as introspective aren't as interesting as they used to be. And this is shaping up what I call the socialist agenda. This is not something that's going to take America by storm. I mean, it's, it's going to impact tens of millions of people. It's going to impact that. Uh, we're gonna have emerging classes of people. You will have the capitalist class. Those of us who go out, start businesses, make money, you will have us. You will have the dependent socialist class. And here's the thing. We have a population of 330 million people, right? Over half of America doesn't work because they're children, they're elderly, they're retired, but we only have half of the population working. What's gonna happen is we're gonna have a lot of people who are going to, to check out. We have a lot of people who are checking out. They're not participating. They're not engaged. They have literally checked out and what this means for those, because essentially what's gonna happen is in the capitalist class, there's going to be much competition for, between capitalists. Like I said, the people who have checked out, who refuse to participate, you ain't gotta worry about them. Now there's gonna be intense class, because you're starting to see it. You're starting to see it on Clubhouse like the people, like the folks who want to uh, comment on my videos on here and Savage Finance and comment with the exception. Many people who are living in the exceptional class of America, all their friends are also in that class. So when I go ahead and talk about these things like Financing cars is a bad idea for most people. They're like, well, I finance cars and it didn't hurt me, but you make half a million dollars a year, player. That ain't normal. Average income of the 160 million people who are working, average income is $30,000 a year or less. That's 80 million people. When you move it up to $50,000 a year, 75% of America doesn't make $50,000 a year. When you move it up to 60,000, 80% of America doesn't make $60,000 a year. So 
with all of these little financial games, like the other day, a lady called in to Dave Ray's show and she and her husband saved two million cash. And if you went through the comments, you would have felt that she and her husband had murdered someone. She was stupid. And this is what's funny. The vast, ma people, vast majority of people in the comments will never see $2 million through investments or cash or otherwise. The vast number of people who are making these comments, they will never see $2 million. And going like, well, you know, hey, that was a quite of accomplishment. It's quite an accomplishment to save $2 million cash. It ain't easy. But they were like, oh, you could have been in the stock market. And I started to see some stuff uh, like if they've invested that money, they could be worth four to six million. And I saw people, oh, they'd be 10 million. I saw they could, oh, they could turn that into 20 million. And once again, the stock market market department, the last 10 years, <clears throat> the stock market has been on fire. At some point, that's going to stop. And what are people going to do? I had a friend who got in real estate when things were good. They got in real estate. Uh, um, there, there were people who were in real estate who were um, they got in when it was good. They got in when things were fine they got in when things were really good and then when the market turned they could not function they couldn't function they were in a world of hurt a world of hurt because they got in when it was good so it's going to be real interesting when the markets shift and what all these people are going to do but going back to the emerging classes that we're about to see. We're going to see there's going to be the capitalist class, which I'm familiar with. There's going to be the dependent class, which I talk about quite a bit. There's going to be some people in the middle. They're not going to be dependent, but they're not going to be totally capitalist. And then there will be another probably class of bohemian nomads, um, the tiny home class. Uh, there's this chick who bought some land and she put all of these tiny homes on her lands. Like, I mean, I'm wondering, like, how do people use the bathroom? Because essentially one thing that she's renting out, it doesn't have a bathroom. So you got to get up, put your clothes on and go somewhere to use the bathroom. And you got to pay for that. Me? I ain't paying for some place that I got a, you know, or a tent or a hut and I got to rough it. I got to pay money to rough it. I don't think so. You know, camping is free. You can go out and pitch up a tent and live that lifestyle for free and not have to pay for it. But yeah, you know, America is changing quite a bit. America is going through a social shift and depending upon the decisions that you make um, it's just going to depend on where you are because you know as you know I'm starting a car business I have not done my projections I got to do my projections today um, but this business should be at twenty thousand dollars in July August in revenue April, May, June, July. Four months to build a business that's making $20,000 a month. I mean, let's talk about that. Uh, someone made a good point that when I was coming up, when I was in my 30s, there was no YouTube. There was no Instagram. There was no Facebook. It was none of this stuff, right? 
So you guys have access to information and training that I did. And I, I'm making, I'll make a point here. I figured this stuff out without that assistance. Many of you guys should be able to do better than me because of this assistance. You should be able to do better. You should be able to build. You should be able to create. Because like, I'm sitting here, because if I go back to the storage auction business, it took two years to get to $20,000 a month. It took two years working seven days a week. Now, because of the internet, because of some uh, startups, because of tech, I can create a business that generates $20,000 a month within four months from start, from a business I know nothing about, a business I have no edge in. Well, actually, that's not true. I've run a business before, so that does give me a slight edge because I know what I'm getting myself into. And for many of you who are starting businesses, you don't know what you're getting yourself into. You're just out here winging it, you know? Um, but that's amazing. That is amazing because my first business which was, God, a godsend for me to start a business that was doing something that I was already doing and to have a supplier, to have a supplier that paid me 50% of the profits. That was, that was a beautiful thing. It was a beautiful thing. But the storage auction business, a business I built from scratch, a business where I had to compete with angry white people, spending money against angry white people and winning, took me, took us about two years before we got to the $20,000 mark. Um, three years, 30, and about five or seven years before we got to the $50,000 mark. And toward the end, we had a few seventy and eighty thousand dollar marks. Now, why months? Why is that remarkable? I have done that by myself here on YouTube. I've had six figure months by myself, no partner, no employees, nothing. And I, I have a feeling once I work out my projections, I'm going to be able to get this duality it's going to be a car rental it's going to be two companies let's talk about that i'm going because uh i had a really good info a conversation with an insurance agent and he broke it down we talked 45 minutes and uh i need to have two entities so i am going to create a car rental entity once i work out some of the business plan and I'm gonna sell cars. Now the car dealership, Mac Daddy Autos, is already done. I already have the LLC, the EIN, the bank account, and I'm going to create another one for the rental car business. Now, this is the thing. I can get away with the same bank account for both entities. Because the banking, it, it doesn't really matter. So, I got to create this um, separate entity for when I start renting cars to people. Uh, this guy was very, very helpful. He gave me the real information. And, you know, this explains why there aren't a lot of people starting car rental businesses. First of all, you're going to need 150000 to a million dollars just to even think about doing that. So that's a big barrier, but let's go back to income. So I should be able to get this business 
to six figures within a year. Now, why is that relevant? What did I just tell you? Storage auction business, I never got to six figures a month. Business almost in that business 10 years, never got to six figures a month. See, what I'm saying is, just like the world has changed from the wonderful, Walt Dis world, the wonderful world of Walt Disney, there is so much opportunity. I'm about to say something that's gonna be very controversial. There is no excuse for you being poor. If you're poor, it's because you want to be. I know that's gonna be highly controversial. I mean, many people are like, the system, man, is keeping us down. The man don't want us to, no. There is too much information out there for free for you to be poor. If you are poor, it is because you want to be. I know that is highly controversial. I mean, I know I expect to get a lot of pushback about that, but that's just my opinion because I'm seeing like, um, I already made a thousand dollars from the car rental business. I don't even know what I'm doing. I have made mistakes. I have purchased the wrong videos. And for the folks who's like, he shouldn't reveal when he made a mistake. It's a bad look. Bro, I, I, I don't have your weak ego. This is how we do it here at the franchise tag. We talk about the real. I made some mistakes, but you know what? I had to make those mistakes to get the data that I now have. Because essentially I wasn't gonna get it from these YouTube courses. Uh, and I went ahead and I looked at some courses for Turo. Um, now, I, I still wouldn't have got the information. I am a firm believer in getting my own data. It's just, it's, it's you know, this data cost me $115,000. That's what I spent on the cars. And the portion of BMW should do three, 3,400 bucks per month, which is like in a year, 40,000, which pays for both those vehicles. Um, I'll keep those maybe because essentially it's an opportunity cost because uh, the, the Range Rovers, as soon as they get the title, they're gone. Uh, I'm selling them. And the um, Acras, uh, the Range Rovers, and the most expensive Acura that I bought, I'm selling them. They're gone. And then I'm going to, I'm keeping the Camry and I might also sell the other two Acras. They may be gone. So once again, it's all, you know, cause I'm gonna get the titles around the same time because I bought the cars at the same time. So I'm gonna get the title to the Porsche, the BMW, the, um, Range Rovers, pretty much the same time because I bought them all on the same day. And then I'm going to get the titles to the Acras pretty much within a day or two. So at this point, I'm going to sell them because essentially uh, I might be able to sell them for more than what I paid for them. Very interesting. So, and also I have the option of trading them in which would, might be more expedient, like with the Range Rover. If I could trade the Range Rover in and get two to three cars, that's a win. That is a win. So we will see how that goes. And what's funny, uh, if I have my dealer, let's see, uh, cause I gotta call this guy, I gotta call him today and see where he is with this office. Cause today, I am renting an office with a massive parking lot. So my storage problem is a disappearing and I'm going to move all of the rental vehicles over there and do the drop offs and pickups from the office building. Um, where was I? Oh, there is no excuse for you to be poor and broke today.
there ain't no excuse. I mean, I'm not recommending that you buy Dodge coin, but we live in a, an economy. Let's take game stop stock okay game stock as a company should be like 10 15 dollars per share because it's 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 going to die at some point it's just going to die and we live in an economy where bs can be manipulated into money let me say that again we live in an economy where BS can be manipulated into money. I want you to really, really think about that. That you can take something that has no financial fundamentals in play and because of the internet and because of the marketing department, the stock market marketing department, the crypto marketing department, that you can make money off real, real, real money off BS. This is the world that we live in. This is the world that we live in. It's crazy that we live in such a world where we are having this kind of impact. There are people who have really become good on the internet, who are making millions from the internet. The internet is exceptionally powerful. The internet is... I made so much money, I made, I made more money off the internet than I did in the storage auction business. Like 10X off the internet. So, we're living in a very different world than our grandparents and our parents. It's a very different world. The things that you can do, the things that you can facilitate are amazing. But you've got to sit down and focus. You have to really, really Think about what you're doing. You have to also be aware of your environment. Going back to, we no longer live in the wonderful world of Walt Disney. The Waltons, Happy Days, Laverne and Shirley, Maud, Archie Bunker. See, when I was growing up, things changed slowly. I remember I was one of the first people to get rid of my landline. I was living in East Point and I remember I never even talked on the house phone. I was always on my cell phone because this was the point. I don't know if you remember this, but at one point you had to pay for minutes, but all of the cell phone companies after 7 p.m., your minutes were free. And I would make all kinds of phone calls after 7 p.m. Then they moved to these mega minute plans. And then they moved to talk anytime you want. Now, when we go from having a landline to everyone doing like, I don't have a landline up in this house. Why? I don't even think the people who lived here before me had a landline. It, it just, it doesn't make sense. When you can go ahead and get a cheap cell phone plan, uh, I think it's Smart Talk or something at Walmart, 40 bucks a month. You don't need a home phone. And I remember when caller ID came out. I remember when you had to get an answering machine for your phone. How many of y'all remember trying to sound all sexy on your answering machine message? Hello, you've reached Glendon, glad you called. 
If you want to leave a message, just drop your name and number real quick and I'll get right back to you. How many of you remember practicing and making multiple answering machine um, messages to get it just right? <laughs> How many of you remember, and I'm about to go way, way back. You met this girl, right? Y'all were liking each other. And y'all get on the landline and be talking for hours. And it's like, nah, you hang up. Nah, you hang up. Nah, you hang up. Be falling asleep on the phone talking to your girl. They don't do that no more. It's all on the internet. It's about getting in the DMs. It, it, it is crazy what is going on today. So in many aspects, the changes which have been profound, changes have been profound. In, one, in one regard, they're really bad. In another regard, they're really great. And the ability to make money at no point in history have we been in a situation where someone can watch a YouTube video, take that knowledge, and go out and start making some money? Let's go back to the car business. Uh, once again, I'll do my projections, I'll talk about them. But I should be able to get this car business to six figures in a year. That is significant. That is fast. That is crazy fast. And I know that you're hit over the head with all these internet marketing things that, hey, you can do this and you can do that and you can make all this. No, 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 you can't. No, you can't. And th this is one of the things I'm pushed against because these advertisements are designed for your do nothing lazy bone. They're designed to emotionally excite you. Hey, I can get $30,000 a month and I don't have to do nothing? What? But the reality is with the information available today, you could get to a million dollar business within two to three years. Never in history has this been possible. Never in history has this been possible? And there is so much information out there because um, I'm gonna talk about something in a minute. All right. My current long-term plan is to buy a 10, $15 million apartment complex. Uh, that might change. In five years, I can build up this auto business where I'm making maybe 10 million a year. Now, this is something that I've noticed with the bigger dealerships. When you go to the bigger dealership, you never see the owner. How many times have you gone to a big dealership and you met the owner? Never. So this means that this person has created a business that is running without them. You know what that's called? Passive income. So I'm sitting here thinking, all right, take me a year to get to uh, six figures and then it takes me three years to get to seven figures and then it takes me five years to get to uh, a million a month. And then I go ahead and hire people and set it up where it runs without me. Um, it's actually better than the apartment complex. Uh, it's kind of hard, because if you Google buying a $10 million apartment complex, you, you get a lot of garbage. So you, you got to actually talk to people, real estate agents, brokers, and get in that pipeline. But if, I got a business that doesn't require my presence, that after expenses and paying everybody and 
spending money that pays me 300k a month that's pretty exciting and this is something like so we will see because i'm going to keep stacking cash in case i do go ahead with the apartment complex but if i can build a business and hire properly and don't have to be there um it's more money it's like way more money because essentially the way i worked it out with the numbers if i bought a 10 million dollar apartment complex and that's going to be depending on where i get it 60 to 70 units which is going to be um because each each million is five thousand dollars financed so i put down three million right so that's thirty five thousand dollars a month what my mortgage is going to be okay and the apartment complex generates 70 let's say eighty thousand eighty thousand a month so we take the 35 from the 80 that's going to leave uh 45 and then we're going to have taxes we're going to have expenses so after taxes and expenses let's say cash flows at 30,000 30,000 a month which is 360,000 a year okay so it's going to take me investing 2.5 to 3 million to effectively get a quick yield because the long-term yield once it's paid off the yield goes up but a yield of 300,000 per year I'm gonna have to spend two to three million dollars to put myself in the position to cash flow at 300k a year all right let's talk about that this business um, I got a budget of 150,000 so I can leverage 150,000 and because I have multiple streams of income I don't have to take money out of the business and just keep reinvesting business proceeds back in the business and get this to a hundred thousand let's say let's say it takes me 14 months to get this business to 100k a month that's 1.2 million a year cash flow let's say once again I go ahead invest get it rolled up um, I can do in a year and get more cash like four times as much cash spendable cash as I could taking 2.5 million three million dollars and invest in it in an apartment complex so that may change because I'm look. I'm like I can take hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and within and very quickly, let's say, let's say I get to my million dollar a month um, goal in five years, and I will be fifty nine at that point, and I will be able to pull three hundred k. A month out that business which is 3.6 million dollars and I don't have to be there I can do the business quicker faster and get more cash flow so I don't know if the apartment complex because essentially you know I, I get some people who are like oh he changed his mind yeah I changed my mind based upon data. When I get better data, I make better decisions. You're absolutely correct. I'm not going to lie. Well, I told them I was going to buy an apartment complex. And even if I could do something better and make more money, I'm going to buy this apartment complex because I said it. You have lost your monkey mind. Because if I can turn this dollars into a million a dollar a month business in five years that's the ticket man and what i would do 
is take the money I have in the bank and I buy me a mansion, cash money. Give me a mansion and just do that. Because one thing I've noticed with the car business, and I have researched this, because when I go ahead and research someone, I go to the Secretary of State to see how long they've been in business. I've done that several times, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years. So for the smart car business operator, they're making a lot of money. You don't be in the business 20, 30, 40 years if you ain't making no money. You don't do that. So, you know, uh, the goal could shift. Because in five years, if I can go ahead and get it built out, get the business model worked out, hire people to do all these things, and I don't have to go into the office, that's retirement. And it doesn't take as much money as real estate. I understand why you real estate guys love financing because it would be heartbreaking if you had to pay cash. It would be heartbreaking because uh, I'm really looking at this whole thing because once again, my thesis is if you're in income danger zone number one, less than $50,000 a year, you would be better off starting a small business, an eBay business, an Amazon business, something that makes 375 a week, 1500 bucks a month, than investing in stock or crypto. And I'm proving my thesis because, you know, I, this, this just came up when I was doing the art of holding and I said, hey, let's run an experiment. This is how this came out. And uh, I'm gonna go in there and run my projections so I can know what my projections are. But I mean, <clears throat> let's, 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 let's keep it a buck. Let's say I spend this business up to 100K a month, cash flow, and I don't wanna do anymore. That's 1.2 million a year cash flow that I built <clears throat> in a year. I never did that with the storage auction business. I don't think, because <clears throat> essentially what I know about building businesses and I know about cash flow, and this is why I'm able to easily see these frauds and scams. Um, that's remarkable. And then five years, get that business to a million a month? A million a month? And I don't have to be there? I just have to hire people, make sure that they do what they need to do and pay them right? I don't have to be there? Have someone do, like the Porsche dealership. When I bought my Porsche, I guarantee you the owner was not there. And the Porsche dealership here in Atlanta is the second largest Porsche dealership in America. The owner is on a yacht or chilling. I don't even know who owns it. I need to look that up and see who owns it. I guarantee you, 100% it's an old person. If it's an old person or it's his heirs who own it. I guarantee it. Guarantee it. So that's all I got for you animals this morning. If you want to get in the art of holding, the link is below. The price is not going up. And I will see you guys in the next one.